Now, 18 to 20 years ago, respectively, I interviewed a young man named Mike Markham, who I affectionately dubbed Madman Markham. And that, that is affectionate, too. I, I called him Madman because the things he was proposing to do I thought would get him cooked like a French fry, and it may yet do that. I have, thanks to my producer, uh, Heather Wade, located Madman. We've got him secreted away to a very special location where he can do an interview. That's right, Madman Markham. Mike Markham is here. Proposing to do, I thought, would get him. Thank God. Frankly, I thought he had toasted himself, and of course you can't ever rule that out with this young man. So uh, that's where we're going tonight. We're going to interview Madman Markham. All right, so you climb up on the bucket, and you jump. And then what? Um, well, long story short, it feels like I got hit with a flashbang, and I wake up, and I'm 800 miles east of there, and two years later. So that's basically, I ain't no other way to put it. <laughs> 800 miles east, and two years gone. Yeah, well, so, so basically what I did, I done, I'm, crank, I'm more or less, uh, well, it's not very scientific in hindsight, but what I did is cranked everything max, basically to the max. So, because I wanted to make sure that I actually leap because rather than hit the floor. So, <laughs> <sighs> so when you woke up, did you have memory of what you had done? I mean, what condition were you in when? Uh, well, when I came, basically, when I came through the other side, so to speak, uh, I had total amnesia. It, that uh, that uh, EMF and that all that uh, magnetism basically messed with my brain. So, <laughs> I'm sure it would. I, I believe, like other mammals, we have magnetite, don't we, in our brains? Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's basically your brain's electrochemical, electro so right. basically, yeah, magnets will mess with electric fields, so. Right. So, how could you possibly have gone 200 miles, and, and it was east, you say? Yeah, well, yeah, this was in Overland Park, Kansas, and I ended up, well, the nearest town I landed near was, like, uh, uh Fairfield, Ohio, you can Google map that. That's basically eight, more like roughly 800 miles east. So, 800 miles. But it took me. It took me quite a while to figure out what basically to remember what the heck I did, and then I figure out okay, where the heck am I? So. And where were you? I mean, when you woke up, what were you on the ground? Were you in the middle yeah, of a shopping ground, center? In the mid- basically in the middle of a field. So. Oh, that's that's actually at least lucky, I guess. Middle yeah, of the field. I mean, I, well, yeah, I mean, the, I guess it rides uh, the Earth's gravitational field, so I don't I don't end up in space. So, which was uh, basically one of my other concerns if I tried to leap too far. So. Of course. Oh my goodness! So um, here you are coming. Your clothes were okay. You were okay. You were stunned. Yeah, I mean, I, well, yeah, I, mean I was saying you it's okay. Basically, I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't on fire. Other than basically, my nervous system all screwed up. It was basically the equivalent of getting hit with a flashbang for uh, I'd say anywhere from thirty to thirty minutes to an hour. I mean, I, could, I was I couldn't basically I couldn't for a minute I couldn't even remember my own name. So for a minute, um, I get that. Okay, that's shock. You were in shock uh, clearly. How quickly did your memory begin to come back? Um, I would say probably an hour. It took me probably an hour or so to get my bearings, and it's like, okay. I, I mean, in 1995, I don't remember if they had GPS or not. I know, well, actually, this is not, well, okay, that's another thing, too. Basically, I did this in 1998, and on the other side, when I landed in Ohio, that was 2000. So. 2000? Yeah, so basically, not only did I jump 800 miles, but it was two. It was uh, skipped over two years too. So actually, a little over two years. This is all the time I thought you were dead. Well, and for, from everybody else's point of view, for two years I didn't exist. I mean, if you if you basically do a, a social security search on me, 
they for two years they won't be a peep. Oh, I believe it. I trust me. I believe it. I searched for you. <laughs> I looked for you, and you did not exist. Uh, it's true. Um, so I, I where to pick up on the story? All right. So now you're you're slowly beginning to remember. Um, but at this point, you don't have a home. You're uh, what eight hundred miles away from where you ought to be, or where you started. And as your memory slowly comes back, I mean, what do you do? Do you go up to somebody's door, knock on the door, or wander into a town, or what? Yeah, eventually. Well, it's like it's like okay. Well, I just well, it's in the middle of a field. I figured okay, just maintain one direction. Eventually, you'll hit a road. Well, at least if I get a road, I'll, I'll have some idea where I am. Well, and it, what basically, long story short, I ended up uh, meandering my way to Fairfield. Which is uh, well, it's not exactly a small town. It's it's uh, just north of uh, Cincinnati. So okay, Fairfield, ended up uh, yeah, ended up basically okay from Fairfield. It's like okay, I know where I am now. So and long story short, I ended up going from Fairfield to a homeless shelter because keep in mind, uh, well, after a few hours, it's like okay, oh, I remember my name now. So um, Madman, did your ID, I mean, like, did you have your wallet with you? I presume you probably removed any metallic objects before you jumped, I would hope. Yeah, yeah, which included my uh, which included my ID, my credit cards, and all that. So Because it wouldn't have been, with these magnetic fields, they would have been erased anyway. So. so you didn't even have ID on you? Nope, I had to go to the DM. Basically, eventually, once I figured, re- remember my name, I mean, after a couple of days, I remember my social security number, so I had to go to the DMV and, up, and up get another date, one. A story oh, first. So, folks. so yeah. here you are, utterly homeless, uh, without ID. You slowly begin to get ID again. You're staying in a homeless shelter, and you have no memories of those years. No, I mean, basically, I mean, it was, it's weird. Basically, it, it erased. Uh, I mean, I, I could still remember, like, old memories, but basically the newer, the newer stuff, like, from the previous five years or whatever, I couldn't remember squat. So, huh. other than Bell, like I said, for a while, I couldn't even remember my name, but eventually I got that back. So, and actually, that was the first thing I got back, and then I remembered, okay, it, it started coming back to me. So, I think it was the end of last week. Yes, so it was. Saturday morning. You, and you were just... Gone. Yeah, so, that was that was well. That's uh, basically that's another weird thing too. Sometimes you know, I'm sure everybody's Googled their own name before, but yeah, I guess uh, there's probably there was hundreds of other people looking for me too. So yes, yes. Uh, when you when you were picking yourself up off the ground, Dale, I get these computer messages and they're helpful. Wants to know, did you need a shave? Um. No, I mean it was from my point of view. It only took. I was only. Uh, only I was only gone a couple of seconds. I think. I mean, I got it, 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 the the closest approximation I can think of is, is as far as experiencing this myself. I mean, it felt like I got hit with a flashbang. That's the closest approxim- approximation of it. Yeah, fair enough. But I mean, you know, a lot would have changed uh, if your body had actually spent a linear two years. You'd be shaggy. You'd have a long beard. You. Have long fingernails, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean that's well, that's the thing. From my point of view, it only took it only took a couple of seconds. When, so. Okay, so when did you first learn? Oh my God, it's the year two thousand. Um, at the homeless shelter. Uh, long story short, I ended up. Uh, did I already mention we got to the homeless shelter in downtown Cincinnati? Uh, you told me you went there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Eventually, I made myself to the homeless shelter in Cincinnati, and well. Every day you get a newspaper. They get a newspaper there, and it's like, wait a minute, this is two, basically this is 2000. So at so. this point, you've got to either figure, no, there's only one thing you can figure, and that that is that you in fact traveled in time, yeah. because otherwise the things I just talked about would have been true. You would have been shaggy. You would have been had giant long fingernails, uh, and and so you did travel in time. And I'm, I'm when did that hit you? That my God, I really did it. Um, it took actually. I was in, when I seen that. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, the time travel movies don't really. Uh, basically, uh, they don't really uh, 
he picked it accurately, like the reactions of people when they realized they'd done that. So, I mean, I, I was in shock for a while. So, <laughs> Well, you know, movies need a little romance and drama and stuff like that, so you have to expect they're going to mess with things. Um, yeah. But it, it, it must have it dawned on you that, my God, I actually did it. I traveled in time. And then I guess did you, so you began to establish yourself. You got ID again. Did you get a job? Did you stay yeah, in the area? I got I got a few. I had a few. Uh, basically, got a few temporary jobs. Eventually, I got uh, most of my memory back. I mean, there's still there, even today there's still holes in it. Really? So, um, long story short, I ended up uh, taking a basically saving up, getting a few temp jobs and saving up my money and end up getting, uh, going back to basically get a catching job? a Greyhound you... back there. And... So you take a Greyhound home. I'm, I'm sure you want to go back to the warehouse and see what's what, right? Yep, and uh, I'll go back there and uh, uh, basically the uh, it's uh, go back there and it's gone, basically everything. And You mean, you don't mean the warehouse? Well, no, the warehouse. No, the warehouse. Keep in mind, I go, okay, basically, this was back in 2000, like 15 years ago. So right. I go back there, and uh, I mean, the warehouse is there, but it's basically all my stuff inside is gone. So gone. That's a lot of stuff to be gone. Yeah, I mean, well, two years. I mean, this is all. I got. That's plenty of time for. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know because basically, I was going to try to. Uh, hunt down all my donors and basically that, well, that's another thing too i couldn't remember the people that donated so ah uh, and a lot of people did i guess donate huh yeah like uh like i said probably 25 or 30 people so all right so here you are you're back at the warehouse and it's empty all your stuff is gone and i'm wondering okay what happened to it uh, of course and, yeah it's and, like and then also you had uh, and, uh, I got, and basically, I was gone, like trying to fill in the past two years of what happened, and with everything, the whole darn planet. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I have to sit down and read the New York Times or something, I suppose. Uh, anyway, did you contact the owner of the warehouse to try to find out what had occurred, or what next? Um, well, that's the thing. I couldn't remember the guy's name. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. We're not going to reveal where you are now. We're just saying you're in a secret, secreted away location, which happens to be really true. My my producer got you to a special place for this interview tonight, right? Don't say where it is. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to keep that to myself. I've, I've, like I said, live and learn. <laughs> yes, live and learn, indeed. Um, so what is ahead for Madman now? Um, well, uh, basically, eventually, I'm going to try to uh, rebuild that thing and test and see. Basically, I don't know if I want to do that again or not. <laughs> that kind of, like I said, that kind of messed with my head. So, If you build again, and I have this really strong feeling that you will, um, would you build to a even larger scale? Would you... In other words, attempt to prove to the scientific community what you say is true, or what would your objective be if you build again? Um, well, that was the, basically. The, keep in mind uh, when this, uh, when everything, when I said everything's gone, even my uh, my documentation for this thing. I don't know what happened to it. So, <laughs> which kind of, I mean, I, even the time machine itself. Even if I still had the, all my notes and stuff from right. it, basically, I could say, okay. Here, basically, I could give it to the world. Say, here's what I did. Repeat it. So, I mean, if a key, if you can't repeat it, it's the whole thing's kind of useless. So, well, not really, uh, not useless. But um, it would be wonderful to be able to document this. There have been some physicists, theor theoretical physicists, for example, that commented in the article uh, that we have up on the website about you and about everything that occurred. And they didn't feel like you traveled in time, but they didn't know what happened on the other hand either. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, well, they brought up uh, that. Well, if this is true, if you uh, then why don't they create vortexes with every lightning strike? 
So the thing is, though. Yeah, but that's not strikes, fair. That's not fair. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can't really stir a lightning strike. It's 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 there and gone so quick. So. That's that's right. That's exactly right. Uh, but your magnetic fields could essentially stir it, and uh, and you were almost soup or fried chicken. I know. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's the thing about it. I didn't even have one single RF burn mark or anything on me. So, I mean, it messed with it, it, the magnetic fields mess with my brain. So, <laughs> other than that, do you remember enough of your system that if you wanted to rebuild it now, you could? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say it's not a hundred percent, but I would say probably between ninety and ninety-five percent. So, the rest I could I could basically do the trial and error thing and figure it out again. So. Do you think right now is I mean keep in mind this thing probably costs several million dollars so if I if I actually had to pay cash for everything right so um Mike do you think that um time travel in either direction is possible or only forward um well here's the thing the, the from my previous experiments uh, of going in reverse cuz I at first it's like a, um I tried to hold the portal open so to speak and basically that way i can walk through and then basically walk back come back to where i started again yeah well well every time i've tried that i've crashed the power grid it takes way too much energy it's basically i agree with all the other physicists as far as that goes basically backwards time travel um well let, let's put it this way basically time travel does not work the way hollywood depicts it oh i've got that I mean, yeah, you could you can basically go backwards in time, but not to any point you pick. I mean, basically, it was, I was like, oh, cool, I want to go see Christ. I want to go see Christ's crucifixion. Um, well, unless you build a time machine at zero, uh, uh, zero or four BC or whenever, actually thirty three B, uh, thirty three AD or whatever, unless you actually build the machine at that time and have it powered up at that time, you can't return to that time. So. Okay. If I build the machine, long story short, if I have the machine powered up tomorrow, yes. I can't come back to today. So, huh. so those two years, it's like they they just don't exist for you, which means that you did not age during those two years. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean long story short, I mean it, as far as the the time travel aspect <laughs> of it is, it basically works the same way as uh, general. Uh, or basically relativity. Um, Mike, here's a question. Um, somebody wants to know why, for example, weren't the police there or somebody to stop you from jumping through? I, they had to know that you were you were building up to it, right? Um, well, that's the thing. Uh, I kind of... <laughs> After the, all the publicity, I basically the only people that knew about it is the people that donated. So I never told anybody else, not the people I work, nobody. So. <laughs> well, that really does make sense to me because somebody surely would have stopped you, right? Um, I don't know if they would have or not. Uh, I mean, technically, it'd be kind of hard to prove it was a suicide attempt. <laughs> I mean, and when it went, exactly wasn't. So. They, they they might have looked at that equipment and figured out it was a, a going to be a suicide, whether no matter what. Uh, hold on one sec, Mike. All right, so phone lines are open, folks. Here it is. Finally, they're open. You can ask questions if you would like, and I'm sure you have questions. This is a man who's traveled in time. Area code 952-225. Five two seven eight. Put a one in front of that. One nine five two 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 five five two seven eight. If you're calling on Skype, MITD five one, or outside North America, MITD five five. I think. Well, nobody did. Madman figured you you were going to do yourself in, and they, you know, somebody would have stopped you. I'm sure. Well, nobody did. <laughs> nobody did, as it turns out. But uh, had I mean, they... if, you go, if you check out, I mean, there's plenty of YouTube videos where everybody. I mean, they actually have suicide videos on YouTube. And really? Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, but, yeah. <laughs> if you there's all, I mean, there's just about everything on YouTube. I mean, if you look hard enough, but there's all sorts of weird things on YouTube, including that stuff, and uh, including some guys standing on top of. Uh, uh, electric trains basically uh, 
just reaching up and grabbing the the twenty five thousand volts of power of the train, and yeah. when you do that, uh, it zaps you like a bug. So <laughs> that's right. All right. Somebody wants to know because there was a rumor, Mike, that you did an experiment with a cat. Is that true or not? Um, no, I don't know where that came from. Probably somebody probably made that up due to lack of information because basically uh, after the first round of publicity, I just I more or less made up my mind. It's like, oh, God, I can't stand being a celebrity. So, <laughs> yeah, you don't I know you don't seek out fame. I'm very well aware that you don't seek out fame, um, Mike. And um, and so it's a honor to have you on the show it really yeah, is way, yeah no not everybody i mean like like every even like every hollywood uh actress or actor actress whatever i mean not all of them basically uh like the limelight so <laughs> i'm, I'm kind of like i kind of like uh i compare myself to jody foster i mean i don't mind uh basically every now and then but as far as people knocking on my door 24 7 uh it's really, I mean, it really, it's to, to me, it's disconcerting having, having somebody I don't know run up to me and ask for my autographs. So. <laughs> I, I, I know the feeling. Um, so. Go to restaurants and people want to, anyway. Uh, listen, Mike, um, people want to know, uh, if you were to do this again, I mean, let's think about it for a second. You could conceivably hopscotch into the future again and again and again uh, maybe you could figure out a way to do it with less trauma to your own person and you know you would still be a young man in the year 20 whatever you want yeah the, 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 i mean like i said the problem is it's a one-way trip i mean it's like the same thing as using relativity yes so well it is a one-way trip that, that, well that's the advantage of i mean everybody it's already been scientifically proven you can use gravity to dilate time well basically i'm using electromagnetism which is 10 to the 30th times stronger right so right. i don't need i don't need basically a black hole to do this so <laughs> um you know they're getting ready to try to create a, a black hole at cern uh you have any thoughts on what, what might happen when they do um well, they're going to be basically. I'm I'm with uh, everybody else, like as far as all the other physicists, physicists, as far as that goes. They'll they'll, they'll be so small they'll evaporate almost immediately. I hope you're right. I I really hope that's what happens. Well, I mean, if not, they'll swallow the Earth at nearly the speed of light, and we won't even see it coming. So. <laughs> yeah, it'll be over. Oh, just like that. Um, all right, on uh, on Skype, you are on the air with Madman. Hi. I think it's somebody named Torch. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Art? Welcome hey. back. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask, the key thing that you really need the most is funding, right? Um, funding or equipment. So. Okay. Well, if you could travel into the future or even if you can travel into the past, wouldn't the number one thing would be to find out what the numbers are going to be for tomorrow and <laughs> well, come, that, when come I, back when and play those numbers I, and and you'd be able to fund yourself with millions of dollars? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously that's the first thing I thought I, when I told the when I first uh, I actually had a reporter ask me that back in 1995 when uh, it's like, what were you planning to do with this thing? Right. When I actually told him I was going, oh, I'm going to go into the future, get the lottery numbers, and then come back and give them <laughs> to myself. I mean, I actually, when I told them that, I was actually laughing when I said it. It was a joke. I mean, I didn't think they would take it seriously. They hung on every word I said, so. <laughs> right. That would be the key to do, though, don't you think? Uh, well, that's the problem. Stopping me, the thing stopping me from doing that, though, is I don't know how to go in reverse. I mean, the time, I, I mean, like I said, I can't go back before I turn this thing on. The best I could do is turn it, like if I turn it on today, I can come back, go to the tomorrow, and then come back today, but I have to keep the thing on the whole time. Is there any way you could send, so much, like, information? So much energy, I can't do it. It, it can't be done. Yeah, he was asking know. if there's any way you can send back information. Um, I haven't really looked into that. I mean, I've heard of uh, basically, I've heard of other people uh, basically like uh, use like uh, like this one guy supposedly made a TV that can see the like see the future or whatever. But I didn't, haven't have I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So what would really bother me is to lose you. I mean, really lose you. I, I thought you were lost for two years, uh, Mike, and now. I have this feeling, I just have this feeling that you're going to rebuild somehow. 
Well, that's the, that's the eventual goal anyway. So, I mean, it may or may not happen. Now, there's this. Uh, I can't. I guess if it happens at some point in the future, I can't really say that it didn't happen. But uh, I've, there's, there's this story floating around me on the internet where I ended up back in 1930 crushed in some tube with a cell phone in my hand or something. Well, as far as I know, that didn't happen. But <laughs> that's not to say that I don't do it at some point in the future. I don't see how because I don't know how to go back to any arbitrary point in the past so you know i've got to say that even going forward in in hops going forward in hops and holding your youth at the same time if you didn't have to end up with a headache no id and in the middle of a field somewhere would be pretty cool yeah well i mean the the foolish looking back on it the foolish thing i'd done i mean basically was i didn't wear a faraday cage when i dumped, dumped into it i didn't think i needed one well. <laughs> I, guess I know you, better now, so. <laughs> guess you did. All right. Uh, let's go to, I don't know, Kansas City on the phone. Hi, you're on the air. Hello, Art. How you doing? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you. Okay, a couple of things for you. Um, I'm a skeptic. I love your time travel talk. I, lo I love hearing it. I love reading it. It's great. Are you a skeptic um, of what Mike did? Well, not necessarily. Um, the proof is in the pudding, naturally, okay? Um, the thing that bothers me on a situation like this, you travel in time, you lose track of two years, a uh, person can go into a coma, okay? My my thing is a two-way travel. You go forward, you come back. You go back, you come forward. Well, that would be now, ideal. It would be ideal, and it would be the real proof, okay? And the other thing, and Mike, this is for you, okay? Um, I have a lot of close family, a lot of close loved ones. Keep track of me. What did your family say or think this time you were gone? Oh, good yeah. question. A really good question. Um, how about it, Mike? Um, well, they basically they thought I vaporized myself, so they were freaked out. <laughs> Did they submit any reports to the police? Did they, you know, a missing person report or anything? You know, I actually, well, that's actually one. When I, that's actually one of the first things I did when I was in that homeless shelter. I ended up going to the library and doing a search myself and see if, uh, and nothing turned up. So basically, I don't know if they filed missing uh, persons or not. Basically, they said they did, but I can't find anything. So. All right. Here is somebody named Clay, who is on um, the wormhole saying. Um, has Madman ever considered creating a Kickstarter page to fund yet another project with the proper funding? He could even keep a video blog to record his results, thus proving the experiment works. Um, you know what? That's actually a guy. I, I never actually considered that. I mean, usually with Kickstarter, it's things with uh, that at the, that. Uh, uh, well, I mean, with. Uh, at large, there's probably so much skepticism. I didn't think it. I don't think I would get that much anyway. So okay. So but, it's not know, a I mean, bad. It's, idea. Not, it's actually an idea. It I mean, is. I mean, one of your uh, original callers from back the from '95, they asked me if I was going to be publishing. Well, I'm not your typical. Uh, basically, one of your other like one of your other guests. Most of your other guests already have like a book published or whatever, and then they go on your show to promote it. Or whatever. <laughs> yes, I know. You don't have a book to sell, right? Yeah, I don't. I, it's like I've never. That's one. That's my weak thing on the technical side. I'm I'm a, I'm a math and science guy. But as far as uh, basically the English side of it, when I was in college, I barely passed that. All right. Here's so. here's what I recommend, Mike. Uh, seriously, there will be a lot of people who would be willing to uh, ghost author for you or co-author for you. So in other words, you could uh, in detail with drawings that uh, if you can remember of the equipment, the warehouse, the whole thing, everything that's happened beginning to end, as you've told it on this story, uh, on this show rather, but in more detail, and write a book. I, I recommend you do it. Um, now, I'm not sure how we well, connect I Stephen, Well, I did remember Stephen Hawking's publisher said every formula including you including this is going to cut your cells in half. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, if we have a publisher who would like to do this, how about I have them contact my producer, you know her, very nice girl, Heather. Yeah. Right? And and maybe you should make a book deal, Mike. Yeah, somebody, yeah I mean, if somebody else is going to write it, I mean, I could write all the technicals, basically the, the, 
the meat and potatoes of it, and they can more or less do the rest. So. Man, if anything deserves to be published, it's this. And that it would go a long way toward, uh, I think, funding any project you want. Uh, it's just a, an idea. David, yeah. you're, you're on with Madman Markham. Hello. Art, man, looking good. I see you on Periscope. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, question for Mark, uh, or Mark Mike. Uh, Mike. So, Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it's intriguing because you don't really have an angle on this. I mean, you don't have a book deal like you said before. Um, you know, Art kind of found you back in 95. So what What about the witnesses? I mean, can, is there anyone out there that can uh, cor corroborate your story? I mean, where, where are they at? Maybe we can find them tonight. I don't know. Well, I mean, um, well, I mean, basically, like I said, I, <laughs> that's, uh, I can't remember. Uh, there was – what was her name? Uh, her last name was Sanderson. That's the only one I can remember. So – but, yeah, yeah originally, they, was yeah, really there, was like, there was like 25 or 30 people that basically were there when I was running this thing. So – all right, just like the police officer who contacted me and actually went on the air. I mean, how often does that ever happen? Yeah, that was yeah, that was uh, that was uh, uh, oh, crap. I just said it earlier. Oh, Tom Hampton. I'm sure he could be found. I'm sure that some other people yeah, who yeah, were I mean, funding I, you I actually, uh, yeah. I mean, when uh, he's actually still an officer in Stanbury, as far as I know. So wow. So yeah, basically, well, you know, small town people, they more or less grow up and die there. So. I do understand. Yeah, I hope you can find, uh, you know, so, some of the people that were there in the warehouse, you know. Right. Um, I think it's a wonderful idea, caller. Thank you very, very much. Um, you know, and put it all together, chronicle it in a book uh, as best as you can remember it. The, the, you know, I, I understand that your memory got harmed, um, certainly. And that's not a surprise. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, just, well, it's like, it's like uh, well, when I was uh, talking to... Uh, Heather, like yesterday, I was right. like, t and I, I was like uh, telling her about this uh, experiment where they were basically taking these eight Tesla magnets, which is a really, really strong magnet, but they actually got it. The tech uh, is mature enough where they actually make that handheld, and they were actually doing uh, showing it off for the Discovery Channel, where they're actually taking that thing, pulsing it into some guy's wow. brain, to where, and he's counting from one to ten while he, while this thing's pulsing in his head and right. and. It was actually messing with the speech centers where he couldn't talk, where he couldn't count. I believe it. I so absolutely like, believe it. Yeah, so it's like uh, these guys are PhDs, and it's like, oh my God, how can you? You basically know more about this than I do, and <laughs> you're still doing it. <laughs> it's almost, it's almost like you were in a uh, a timeless coma for two years. I don't know how else to think about it. I mean, you've got to ask yourself. I certainly ask where was madman for two years where were you um did you simply jump through that time and land on the field it seems that way yeah i mean as far as i could i didn't like i said i didn't physically age as far as i could tell i mean my fingernails were the same length as they were i didn't i didn't have that not even one days of not even one day's growth of uh, uh, facial hair so okay. uh, as far as i can as far as i could tell i just skipped over that two years so all right, uh, let's stay with the phone and go to next, whatever next is. Hello. Hey, Art, this is Tom from Florida. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Tom. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to – I missed part of the show, unfortunately, and I just wanted to uh, ask, Mike, did you have any feedback from the government or anything? Did, did any government officials get in contact with you? I mean – That's a very, like very good question. A very good question. I mean, question. well, that's another thing. I mean, Hollywood, basically, they'd have – They'd have to. They'd uh, they'd have me. Uh, the men in black show up and make me disappear. Well, obviously that didn't that didn't actually happen. So, did anybody from the government at all contact you? No. Basically, you would think they would. I'm sure they. I mean, they have spy satellites everywhere, so I'm sure they know about it. But no, nothing. They. I didn't hear a peep out of them. Nobody. No. Nobody came knocking on my door, offering me money, saying, "Hey." Come work for us. We'll get, well, basically we'll give all give you all the funding you need. I, I mean that works. That happens in every Hollywood movie you ever you ever watch. But not real uh, life. Reality is a little bit different. So God, that's incredible, Mike. Uh, you would think that some government agency, DARPA, somebody. Yeah, I mean you think yeah you think uh, yeah Department of Energy or DARPA or, yeah really actually DARPA because basically they're 
I mean, they fund all sorts of strange things. So, yeah, you'd think they would be uh, coming, like knocking on my door, checking hand, but nope, didn't happen. If they were to come to you now, what would you would you cooperate with them or or not? Well, uh, usually, I mean, the, the, the thing with DARPA, uh, well, I don't have firsthand experience with them, but I'm willing to bet they try to militarize every. <laughs> I mean, basically, the check isn't free and clear. There's always strings attached. I hear that. So. <sighs> All right. Um, very quickly, let's try this. You're on the phone uh, and on the air. Hi, Art. What a pleasure to be on the phone with you and with Mike. Um, first of all, I want to say um, that I appreciate your your uh, your interest in time travel because never because ending. You, yeah, because you have such an interest, it uh, it allows all of us who also have an interest to enjoy these uh, topics and in, uh, in depth. Um, but my question is this. Um, we, we know, obviously, that he ended up in our dimension. In other words, when he, when he went through this so-called time machine, he didn't go into, like, another dimension or an alternate future. He obviously was stayed within our own dimension, our own time, our own space. So that begs the question, um, the Earth is in a different spot two years from now. So if he ended up in the in the same locale, I'm sorry, the same dimension as as well. Well, no, no, wait a minute. He moved 800 miles. Remember? No, no, no. The Earth. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. So in other words, why didn't he materialize in space? Um, We're at a break, and I have to break. So, Mike, that is kind of a, a cool question. Uh, and one worth considering during the break. Jasmunda from Down Under, I know he's in Australia. He's wondering um, if you were upset that you missed the Millennium New Year's Eve. Um, well, kind of. Technically, the Millennium wasn't so. <laughs> depending on who you ask, the Millennium didn't start to 2001 anyway. So. <laughs> Good point. Uh, it is depending on who you ask, indeed. Um, but, of course, it's just gone, huh? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was kind of depressing, but <laughs> I'm more. I was at that point. I was more excited than depressed. So I completely understand. Um, all right, I believe it's Trey from Atlanta. Hi, Trey. Hey, Art. I'm, I'm sort of reticent to say this, but uh, you know, I feel like with Madman here, and it, it is a huge honor to talk to you. I do you feel like even if you haven't personally, in perhaps this reality, have hit time travel do you think an alternate version of you has Ooh, <laughs> that's a pretty cool question a lot yeah, of when you well if you if you consider like the multiverse theory i guess if there's infinite versions of me some yeah i guess so i mean if you think of it that way i mean it's definitely a possibility yeah it, I'm, well yeah i mean by definition basically uh yeah, I mean, with infinite possibilities, everything that could possibly happen has happened, as far as that goes. But, yeah, you know, I'm kind of more concerned about me rather than alternate me's. So. <laughs> well, you are now how old, uh, Mike? Um, according to Bur- my birth certificate, 42. But uh, Really, only 40? Yeah, biologically, I'm 40. So at 40, you know, you're in your prime. There's no question about it. You're in your prime, and yeah, I, hopefully with luck, I'll have another forty. So well, maybe you will. And again, what are you going to do with it? I mean, I, somebody who's already done the incredible thing that you've done can't just give up. Oh, of course, of course not. So you're so. gonna you're gonna build, aren't you? Well, if I yeah, if I can, I, if I can, I will. Ah, <laughs> uh, hello there. You're on the air with Madman Markham. Hi. Uh, I think the um, missing equipment in the warehouse part of your story is the weak link, because it's easy to find out who owns a commercial building. We all know all you have to do is go to the local courthouse records department. Sure. Or a realtor or an attorney, and they will tell you the name of the owner of the warehouse. And you're much too brilliant and you're not much, much too practical to have overlooked this because of losing all of your equipment and your notes. 
What's your explanation for this? Mm -hmm. And the video. I want to, the video, too. Uh, well, basically, like I said, as far as the video goes, all that disappeared with the equipment. But right. uh, believe it or not, I not that didn't actually uh, cross my mind. So <laughs> as far as, like, looking up the realtor or the building or whatever. So Why not? I mean, I would think you would definitely definitely want to know what happened to your stuff yeah and it, yeah yeah i mean i would but like i said basically i you know what that didn't actually cross my mind i mean like like i said at first i couldn't even remember i didn't even have the the brains to remember my own name so <laughs> <laughs> if uh well i look i know that the stuff was there i know and that I, and when i actually well yeah when i actually went back there i was uh, i actually stayed there for uh stayed there for a week but yeah, believe it or not, the week I was there, I didn't actually think to go to the courthouse. To do you mean that you stayed in the warehouse for a week when you went back? No, I mean no. I, I just, in I, town. It was, yeah, I mean it, it. basically it made me really depressed being, being there and seeing it empty. So I, yeah. I got the hell out of there. So. I I totally get that. That would be depressing. It's like where did everything go? Um, overseas somewhere. Hi there. You're on the air with Madman. Hi. Hi. Um, where Where are you? I am in Japan, and for some reason I'm hearing myself. Oh, there we go. Okay. Good. Um, so for, I was going to say that I feel kind of like I'm time traveling myself because I'm watching you on uh, Periscope, and it's about 15, 20 seconds ahead of the uh, radio that it's I'm listening to. It's a type to. of uh, time travel. <laughs> yeah. But um, I guess I had two questions. Sure. Um, one of them, or a co question and a comment. One is that on the DARPA side of things, if they – I mean, if everything that we hear is, or even if half of what we hear is true, I would think that they wouldn't really need you, honestly. I feel like, to a certain extent, they'd probably be way beyond what you're doing, and their only interest would would be to shut you up, if anything. Yeah. They probably just figured, oh, he'll burn himself up or do it wrong or he won't remember. Or We've already done that, so we don't care. Yeah, it's kind of a good point, uh, Mike. If you've well, that, done you this. Know, uh, that could be why they haven't knocked on my door. <laughs> They that, already yeah. know, they already know more than I do. So there you go. And the question I mean, I, I mean, had was, they have uh, billions of dollars to do stuff with. So I didn't get to hear the whole show yet. I'll go back and listen to it when I'm because I'm subscribed. But uh, um, you talked about the warehouse being empty. But did you have like a, a house that you were living in in the town? Is was that still there? Was your like your personal possessions and stuff still still That's there? Good question. Or did that get you know? Um, well, right. actually, at the time, the house I had at the time was in uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. Um, that yeah, that was all long gone too. That basically other people were living there now. Wow. So. So your family or anybody like keep any of your stuff? I mean, do you have any personal belongings or anything? Because I feel like that would be like I, a big I loss. basically had to start over. So oh, wow. I'm sure basically I don't know. Well, what happens to stu uh, stuff when somebody disappears for two years? You will hear uh, when you listen to the rest of the show about his ID being gone about mm. uh, it, a lot. Trust me. Um, I, I, I'm more I, or less. I, I basically, it's, I basically it was in the same boat for with, with somebody, somebody's house burning down, and with their, with every all their possessions inside. I basically in 2000, I had nothing. So I imagine when you went back to back, yeah, so. when you went back to the warehouse, I'm sure it was just a gigantic, depressing moment. Oh yeah, I mean, here's what I imagine. I imagine that um, p perhaps either whoever owned the warehouse. Or uh, perhaps the ten tenant that came to the warehouse um, after you disappeared, literally, um, had everything just dragged away somewhere and, and probably put in, you know, the junkyard. I hate to say that, but yeah. Well, I mean, well, there was those electromagnets were, yeah, yeah. Probably they probably sold it for scrap and got quite a bit of money from it because there was a lot of copper in that. So God knows they rip up copper, um, you know, from. Uh, Radio antennas have radials. They rip that up and sell it as copper. It's horrible what's going on. Uh, Daniel, hello, Daniel, on Skype. You're you're on the air with Madman. Hi, guys. Hi there. This is actually Dimitri, and Daniel is my son. Oh. He was the one that put the call through, but I just wanted to say that it's a great honor to talk to both Art and Madman Markham. Thank you. I've listened to the original um, uh, broadcast back in the mid 90s when I was a teenager and I was fascinated by the story. I well, in that uh, case, can you verify that uh, what you heard then is basically what you heard now? 
Yeah. Except yep. for the new stuff. I would say so. And I, as I said, you know, many years went on since the original broadcast, and um, it just this story just stuck with me. It was always in the back of my mind. I would think about it every now and again. I always wondered what happened to Madman, and, uh, you know, I tried every now and again to hop online and uh, try to see if there was any new information. Just maybe a couple of months ago, I probably spent a whole day digging online and, uh, you know, came up with little things here and there and actually uh, found a story about him, um, you know, appearing 800 miles away and i thought for some reason that that was some bogus story but no now hearing it from you know michael markham himself i gotta say hey you know what that really did happen but okay. what i wanted to uh, sure. ask is okay so there was a warehouse where all of this equipment was um set up and you know i'm sure all these people were there watching michael jump in he disappeared obviously you know this was uh, there was something to this machine, to all of this machinery. It wasn't just a joke. I mean, guy either teleported someplace, whether he went, you know, forward or backwards in time. Um, it doesn't matter because either one of those scenarios would still be out of this world. And I just don't see anyone scrapping this stuff because there is a lot more to it than just, you know, oh, I don't know. A, a bunch of Transformers sitting around. And I was going to say, um, tracking these people down wouldn't be that hard because obviously at some point you know there's someone's name that was attached to the lease or um yeah of title course of course you know what warehouse. else you know what else is also possible caller and uh -huh. that that is that somebody did ex know exactly what happened and uh somebody came in who know knew what they were doing and took it all away right and then um, another thing I was going to ask is, whatever happened to the videotapes? I, I mean, I know, obviously, you know, Michael doesn't know how to get a hold of any of these guys. But, you know, you would think that if something like this happened and someone got it on video, it it's bound to uh, make its way to YouTube. I mean, I've checked all over. There's okay, nothing, well, you so. know, the answer to that is all that stuff, the recording of all this was done in the warehouse. So this stuff was in the warehouse, including the camcorder, right, Mike? Uh, yeah, a camcorder, uh, several hours of footage, and my personal journal basically were um, more or less uh, right down the date and basically the experiments of day that, uh, that day I did. So, Including, um, I would imagine, your ID and, and anything metal you had that you were carrying. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, can't, I mostly, I usually had that on me unless, until, until that day I was actually going to jump in because I didn't want that uh, basically erasing. So... Because there's like yeah. a magnetic stripe on the back, and if you race that, well, it, yeah, you can't sway. It doesn't work anymore. So, mm -hmm. Right, but these people were at the warehouse when everything went down while the video camera was set up recording the whole event. And so you'd think that one of those guys would probably grab the camera after the fact or at least grab the tape so they would have some kind of proof of, hey, you know what, I've witnessed a guy either. Either that, time. either that, sir, or they didn't want any evidence of this. True, true. Well, in any case, fascinating story. Loved sure it. And you know what? I I really hope that Mike can uh, go forward with this. And uh, you know what? Maybe put out a shout-out because I know there's a lot of people listen to um, the show that would probably like to uh, contribute just like the folks back in the day did. And, uh, you know, I you know what I think. I, I, go forward. Okay. I, thank you. I, I honestly think that one of the better paths now for Mike – might be to find a publicist and sit down with a publicist and even if you have to do regressive therapy, you know, uh, in order to bring back some of the details that got blasted away when you went through, somehow commit all of this to paper and do exactly what everybody else in the world does, write a book. Yep, yep, that's... And uh, I'm actually looking at the... the I, this one guy suggests uh, I'm actually looking at the website now. Go uh, go to tell him to set up a GoFundMe account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, GoFundMe or uh, uh, you know, well, that's crowdfunding, right? Yeah. Well, one thing I do want to avoid is uh, well, I know this one guy. He supposedly had some sort of free energy device, and he basically they ended up arrest sending him to prison for securities fraud. So I definitely don't want to basically. End up that go end up going falling in his shoes. No, we don't want you back in the pokey again. 
Yeah, that's well. Yeah, I mean, that's as far as that goes. That's what basically. Well, he more or less said, "Here's a free. I, I got a, here. I have an engine that runs on water." And well, I guess he ends up uh, filing on his company on the New York Stock Exchange, and then he couldn't deliver. And well, basically, they more or less uh, sent him to prison for securities fraud. So, and there are a few things that we do know for sure. We know you did the experiment. We know you ended up. 800 miles away from the point of the experiment, and we know that two years disappeared. People are asking questions about the warehouse, but I kind of understand if everything was gone, you'd just kind of, I don't know, throw up your hands in dismay, and I, you'd probably be a little disoriented. Uh, is there anything left, uh, Mike? Are there photographs, uh, any pictures at all of the big equipment that you had set up? Um, anything? No, unfortunately. I mean, oh. I the, the drawings, but basically those are, red, those are redrawn from memory. So. Right, right. Oh, that is so sad. So sad. And it seems to be something that happens in time travel stories uh, that we get even from others. It's um, oh, God, sad. Uh, Jack on Skype, you're on the air with uh, Matt Men. Hi. Evening, Art. Evening. Uh, Mr. Markham, I have a suggestion for you, sir. If you set yourself up a Patreon account and then link, link that with a YouTube account and start making a weekly video, I can pretty much guarantee that everyone listening tonight and that's been listening to this kind of broadcast for the last 20 or 30 years will subscribe to your YouTube channel. YouTube will start paying you, and then Patreon will start paying you. And that will fund your research. The only thing you got to promise us, though, guy, is that you're going to keep us updated on your progress. Um, do you want to do that kind of thing? It's a good suggestion. Um, do you want to get on social media? The trouble with it is, uh, Mike, that it does make you, a, a, you know, like a celebrity. And yeah, well, I mean, some, that, sometimes that's unavoidable as much as I don't like it. <laughs> that's right. So. You're absolutely correct. So you consider that? Um, well, you, believe it or not, I already have like a YouTube account. I mean, I think it's been hacked because there's like stuff posting on it that I didn't post. <laughs> so. Oh, that happens a lot. Yeah, but... Uh, I know. I know two years... In the bigger scheme of things, is is short, but I'm wondering, uh, did you were you jolted by the change in technology? Because we we are a fast moving world. Was there well, any? Yeah, I mean, when I'm like I said, basically, I had to go to the library and catch up on what I missed. So. <laughs> Was there anything that surprised you in in technological progress? Um. Well. Yeah, I mean, somewhat. I mean, 1990, basically 1998. Uh, the main thing I would think, uh, I was using uh, uh, first-generation IGB, IGBTs in my time machine. Right. Well, they had, by 2000, they had the second-generation ones, so I'm thinking they're up to like six or seven now. But <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, but, yeah, silicon technology was the thing that totally blew, mostly blew my mind. So, oh, yeah, they were making a big deal about gigahertz processors. Well, in 1998, they only had 233 megahertz, so <laughs> that was a big leap. <laughs> yeah, it sure has been. All right, uh, Madman Markham and somebody in Colorado Springs, I think. Hi, hi, all right, this is Kevin. A, comment, a couple comments. Sure. First, the question from the caller about why, why you wouldn't have ended up in space. Yes. If I jump exactly this moment in time, a year forward, would not I end up in exactly the same place I am now? The Earth would be in the same place in space. Well, if it was exactly, maybe if it was exactly a year. Um, and that's what I. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I, I've got you. So you're saying, uh, even though it was two years. Mike, well, keep, well, keep, well, keep in mind the sun's not staying put in one spot in space. Compared to, it depends on what your point of reference is. Even there's like every, it takes like twelve thousand five hundred years technically to be in the same spot. But you got to remember the whole Milky Way galaxy is also rotating. Were so, you gone? It's a good question. Were you gone exactly two years? Do you know? Uh, no, it's actually two years and two months and some odd days. So. Really. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, as far as you know, when that guy, actually that question was asked before we went to break. Right. 
But, uh, yeah, basically what happened was, uh, well, the other end of the wormhole, so to speak, I got, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, basically, it more or less uh, rides, uh, well, it's riding, riding the center of the gravity of the Earth. So I don't have to worry about ending up in space. So. Wow. Wow. This whole thing but, is so incredible. And luckily, I, I guess, uh, luckily, it's uh, as far as uh, stability goes, it's not dumping me in the middle of something. So that's actually good. <laughs> that's actually why, what I was worried about. Okay, are all these hamsters? Uh, are they end up in? It's like are they end up in the middle of the parking lot or whatever? I mean, literally buried in the asphalt. So yeah, maybe <laughs> when you die, madman, uh, you'll walk through the pearlies, and there will be. A whole bunch of hamsters and guinea pigs staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kenny, hello there, Kenny, wherever you are on Skype. Hey, how's it going? It's fine. Hey, uh, yeah, that was going to be my question because you guys went to break and uh, why didn't he end up in space and you guys forgot to answer that question. Um, so that that was my question. That was going to be reminding you to ask so that. Your, your, your it, whole call is now useless. Or do you have, sorry, an, do you have another question? <laughs> I, have a, I, have a, I have a request. I, I do definitely have a request. Okay. Um, is, is there a way that you can come up with a compilation of uh, all, the, all the times JC called you and put it on as a, as a tribute? Because that guy was, was awesome. I mean, okay. <laughs> well, maybe like a thank you, like a memorial. Because I think he's, well, you know, I, I shouldn't say it because J.C., I don't know where J.C. is. He may be. Yeah, I, I heard he was, uh, I never listened to the show before yesterday, and I heard he was like some legendary heckler. So. <laughs> uh, legendary heckler is a way to put it, I suppose. Um, hi there. You're on the air with Mad Men Markham. Hi, Art. Thank you for taking my call. I just have a quick question for sure. your guest today. And, sure. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm curious to know about his familiarity with the intergalactic gravitational uh, transportation associated with his time travel. I missed the first half of the call. I'm just curious to know if he used electricity to increase the magnetism and the gravity within his warehouse when he traveled. Oh, you've got a you, – are you a time traveler? Uh, you know, no, member of our time traveler club is what I mean. No, I'm not, Art. Oh, goodness. Uh, you need to go back and hear the beginning of this program because we detailed everything, and we can't go through it again. Uh, no my, my, my fault. My yeah, fault. If, you go, if you go to the – I think if you go to YouTube, even the original 1995 interviews are on there, so. That's right. Uh, well, no of course, the big experiment is not part of that. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the early stuff. Yeah, there was quite a bit that happens from 1997 up till uh, I should say. Yeah, 2000, so I'm I'm so I'm sorry caller, you'll have to find a way to hear the show. Uh, that's that's all I can say. All right, uh let's see if we can quickly do one before a masked man on Skype hello. Hello, going once. Hello. Yes. Art. Yes. Yeah, I, I got a question. I'm wondering if he knows whether he is in the same dimension he left in. You know what I mean? Did yes, I do. Did he go to another Earth with another universe? <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, like well, alternate. I'm still here. Yeah, yeah like alternate reality. So, yeah, it uh, would it would make sense even, you know, if it, all your stuff has vanished. Well, none of your well, stuff I mean, the change in You would really expect to, none you know, of your stuff the change in technology. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. One, one at a time here. Caller, go ahead. You would really expect none of your stuff to be around. It would be missing. It would it be in the warehouse. You know, that's a kind of a thought. Mike, what do you think? Uh, that's actually a possibility. I have no way of like, knowing for certain uh, what the heck happened. But, maybe, and, uh, when, and, maybe, maybe when you vanished, it did too. What, what, uh, I've got a question. Was there anything on the floor? Were there scar marks? Were there drag marks? Anything at all? Um, no, there was actually a new tenant there. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I knew it. So, I mean, if there was anything, uh, basically, with the well, where my the the main uh, contraption was, I guess you could call it the main uh, uh, vortex generator or whatever you want to call it, uh, where that was, 
there was a bunch of pallets stuck there, it's like stacked there. So a bunch. <laughs> if there was drag. Pallets. If there was uh, skid marks or whatever, they were covered up. Uh-huh. So <sighs> another tenant. Um, very quickly, you're on the air with Madman Markham coming up in a break. Hi. Hello, Art. Welcome back to the airwaves. Uh, this is Ryan out in the middle of the Sonoran Desert in Buckeye, Arizona. Hey, hey there. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know if there was a missing uh, person uh, report, because if somebody jumped through something as he describes and there's witnesses, people are going to panic, like the owner of the building, you know, potentially manslaughter, homicide, being complicit in. Not to mention his family. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, caller. Hold on. We're getting an answer. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, well, my family thought basically thought I more or less vaporized myself. And as far as everybody, my, that's why actually when I went basically when I went back there, that's what I ended up. That was one of the first things I did was do a search on myself and to fit, see if I can find the, uh, like I said, missing persons reports. All right, and all, all right. that stuff. Both do of you, you the record. Yeah, both of you. Hold on. I'll bring you back, caller. Stay right where you are. We're in break. But he's not. David in Los Angeles writes something that, um, as I bring back this caller and uh, Mike, I think you all should hear. Art, I'm a real estate broker, and whenever someone just disappears from a property, we call a company to trash everything inside. Most times we have no idea, nor do we care what's going into the dumpster. Then we rent to a new tenant. That's how it works. Uh, caller, you're back on with uh, Madman Mike. Yes, sir. I and mean, I just, um, you know, it's a very fascinating story. I'm, I'm kind of like thinking maybe this was a story that would have been good for truth or trash. It's just there's too many holes in the story. Like what? A guy disappe- well, a guy disappears for two years, and law enforcement, the media is not alerted. Uh, somebody panicking that witnessed this. I, I the look for the guy myself. Well, and then he appears uh, out of the field, out of the homeless shelter. There's got to be a record of, of him be, appearing there. And I'm then sure there is. Jobs. Okay, Mike, is there a record of you, your appearance at the homeless shelter? Um, yeah, they, I'm sure there is. I mean, they had security cameras in there, so. Well, well I, I mean, mean paper, still, I don't know if they still have that footage from this. Keep in mind, this was 15 years ago, so I don't know if they still have the footage or not, but. Well, I understand it, but extraordinary claims, you have to have extraordinary evidence. I mean, it's a great story, but there's a lot of holes, especially where you disappear and there's all these witnesses. Nobody goes to the cops. No one goes to the media. And then, like you said, the credit cards. Actually, the me- hold it, hold it, hold it. One thing at a time. Yes, You're blasting a lot of things. Uh, the media Sorry. the media did pay attention, and the media did, including me, nationally, went on the air and said, um, Madman is gone. We can't find him. And other media looked into it as well. Um, now, as Pilates will tell you, people disappear. It happens. And gone because of go ahead. Gone because of this. Uh, him jumping into uh, through his yeah through his uh, time machine or just disappearing off the grid. It's two different things. I'm not trying to be critical. Or no, you can be critical. Stuff. It's fine. Be I critical. The story is just like, you know, family members would have panicked, okay? If somebody would have said, hey, you know, your son, your daughter, your whatever, would have jumped through something like that, and he said they assumed that he vaporized, well, I would think they'd go to the police. And I would, too. The, um, and the and guy and that owns the building? Well, um, all right. That's yet something else. You're jumping ahead. All right. Uh, Mike, let me ask you this. Uh, your family... Um, I said I asked that too. Um, I look. I don't know, and I don't. I, I have no right to pry, but I don't know how close you were to your family. I don't know anything about you in with that regard. I mean, um, so are you surprised they didn't file a police report? Well, I mean, I was actually uh, for. F, I mean. Kind of, but not really. I mean, I talk to him every, like, I mean, I don't call him, like, every day and tell him what I'm doing or anything like that. I mean, usually I call, I call him every, I'd say maybe every few weeks. So, um, yeah, but. They, I mean, okay, I, let's try this. I, they knew what you were doing, didn't they? 
Yeah, and I figured, well, okay, maybe, it, you know, they assume, okay, it's, I, I, I figured they'd have a, I mean, none of them have a life insurance policy that they tried to collect or anything like that, so. Uh, well, I'll tell you this, I figured, if I were okay, writing a policy. Search, and there was no, uh, and there was no, uh, okay, I figured maybe if the world assumes I'm dead, maybe there will be a death certificate of me. No, I'm, they, I guess the, the world assumed I'm still alive, so, because. I can't find a death certificate on me. Well, after about a year, they can do that. I, or maybe it's more than that. I really don't know. But I, I me was tra- neither. So I was going to say, if uh, I was to ask, if I was asked to write a policy on you, uh, and I was the underwriter, I'd say no, no, no chance. Yeah, I mean, only yeah. I mean, the the premiums for that would be insane. So. Everybody has to remember. Everybody knew what Mike was doing. Uh, he had been arrested. He had uh, been in jail. He had collected this equipment. Then he had collected um, uh, donations and money from broadcasting that we did. Uh, He had the warehouse. We know about that. And he had the resources to build the stuff he talked about. So we know an awful lot. Uh, Granted, there are some we don't know, but we know that much. Uh, William on Skype, you're on the air. Roosevelt's right now. I beg pardon? Roswell's right now. Well, Roswell's right back to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mike, I've got a question for you. Okay. You said when you put your, when you put your small animals through, they wound up either east or west. Yep. Was it always the same direction, or was it one or the other? Uh, it was, um, as far as I could tell, as far as trying to figure out if there was a pattern to it, it was east, east or west was random. So... So they either went east or west, but never north south, caller. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay. If he's traveling forward in time, he should always go in the same direction and either wind up above the ground or under the ground. Well. And my next question is if you saw them appear, did they appear on the ground or did they appear above the ground and fall to the ground? Well, I mean, they were appeared above the ground. I mean, they were like basically on the surface of the ground, they weren't under the ground. And I think we didn't arrive, come back dead, so I'm assuming they didn't, uh, like, pop in, like, high enough above the ground to where the fall killed them. So, Were any of them um, physically affected in any way that you could detect, uh, Mike? No, I mean, they were perfectly fine, as far as I could tell. No no burn marks. They were, I mean... <laughs> I mean, they even had their same appetite. They, I mean, as far as you could, like, as far as like, you could physically tell, nothing. There would nothing changed. So, okay, all right. Uh, let's Obviously, go. Uh, it did something. It probably did something to the nervous system. But if, as you pointed uh, out, they can't talk. Yeah. So it certainly did something to your nervous system. Hi there. You're on the air with Madman Markham. Oh man, that's such a wonderful broadcast. Thanks for having me on. Sure. Um, Mike. Uh, this is just a phenomenal story. I've been following it for, well, 18 years now, 20 years, however long it's been. Um, I have had a lot of thoughts on, on ways you can do it. I'm kind of surprised that you've used as many animals as you have. Um, the technology has evolved quite a bit now. Um, if you do build again, and if you were to try to put items through, um, what about using something like GPRS or some sort of a tracker or a beacon Mm. And shielding it with like a mylar bag, uh, having it having the mylar bag pop with say like a CO2 canister on a timer, and then you could also try to record like a stopwatch or have some other way to really see how much time has passed on one side of the coin. Well, you can't uh, take anything metallic through. And, and by the way, caller. Uh, by the way, real quick. Uh, hold on, caller. Uh, real quick. Uh, how many animals would you put through before you personally jump through? Well, I would at least put through something with some level of intelligence like a dog. I, <laughs> I hate to say that because I'm a dog lover. But something that can sit, shake, something that can, if, if I could see that it recognizes the man, <laughs> yes. has some level of sentence after it, uh-huh. I might feel comfortable going through. Okay. <laughs> well, um I, I guess Mike may have considered and possibly rejected sending a dog or a cat. There was a rumor about a cat, but yeah, I I, I do yeah, understand. Yeah, the cat. Well, the cat. Yeah, yeah, the cat never happens. So, a lot of cat lovers out of there, uh, out there who would uh, who'd be upset. 
Yeah, and I didn't want Peta knocking on my door, so. <laughs> All right. So, uh, somebody uh, calling themselves Manila Thriller, you're on. Hey, Art, it's Mike from Burbank. Hey, Mike. I spoke to you on uh, Truth or Trash. Okay. Um, hey, um, so the guy, you know, had money. So he, did he have the money in the bank? Did he have a lot of interest when he got out? When he, you it, know, the guy, you, mean, years you later? mean Mad Men, had money. Yeah, what happened to his bank accounts? What happened to the utilities that he was paying? Was he in arrears? Did he take care of that? After you've been gone two years, uh, it's all a good question, really, uh, Mike. Um, did um, you have Did you have money in the bank? I, you were not a you rich guy. You know what? I wish I did. Basically, it was like one of those deals where it was like maybe a dollar or something. I mostly, I mostly spent all the money on basically parts for this thing. So, <laughs> I, I believe it totally. So, and. As far as uh, the utilities go, usually once you get twenty, once you get thirty or sixty days behind, they shut it off. So I'm assuming that's what ha what's what happened. They certainly do. So I mean, my you know, basically when I came back, my credit was trashed. So yeah, that's probably what happened. <laughs> okay, caller. Oh, okay, okay, Art. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate the call. Uh, you're on with Madman Markham. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hey. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'm here, and it's like it's. I'm, I'm here looking on the internet, and it says that uh, says that his stuff melted down. Over, oh, his, now where his, did you? Um, if I can ask, where did you read that? Um, it's it's uh, the infobarrel.com. <laughs> I bet yeah, there's a million there's, rumors there's about a, what happened. A, yeah, there's about uh, half most of those stories. Uh, don't take it word for word, basically, what they're doing, since I was uh, more or less kept to myself for the past 15 years. So more or less people guessing what happened. And, well, you know, you tell a story and you pass it to the next guy and it changes a little bit. Well, 15 years for that, it's going to be something totally different. Like I don't know where that cat came from, that cat story came from, but it didn't come from me. So <laughs> yeah, well, anyhow, anyhow, I, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna. I, I just got a quick question for you here. Okay, now, now you talk about about body mass, right? And maybe, maybe you got projected two years in, into the future because your body mass is larger than, like, let's say, a smaller animal. If, if you get what I'm saying, like, if you send something through, mm -hmm. it appears a minute later. Yeah, so if you're I, if you're larger. You're going to get projected further. That's like, yeah, that's actually uh, crossed my mind. I mean, it's kind of counterintuitive. I mean, like uh, if you're taking a rocket to the moon or whatever, I mean, it usually takes more energy to transport more mass. So, I think it would be working in reverse, but maybe that's not the case. So, yeah, it's a possibility. So, yeah. You know, nobody yeah. should imagine that Mike has all the answers. Uh, he doesn't, and how could he? Oh yeah, he has oh, told yeah. well, he, he, you know he has that, told you what he knows. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that was just the theory on my part, you know. So oh, nothing wrong, wrong, wrong with it. Throwing that out there. No, yeah. no, it's good you did. Well, Thank you. I mean, yeah. Okay, I mean, well, hey, like hey, thanks a lot, and I'll, I'll let you go so uh, you can get in some more callers. Thanks. All right, take care. Um, yeah, Mike, I I don't expect you to have all the answers. You have given us what you can give us uh, about what happened. Uh, what happened to the animals, what happened to the inanimate objects, and then what happened to you. That doesn't mean you have all the answers behind, you know, how it happened, why it happened. And yeah, I mean, that's why I'm trying to figure out. That's why I'm trying to figure out. And most of this stuff at this point is pretty much uh, hands-on trial and error. So, or educated guess, I guess you could say. You could have tried to cash in on this a long, long time ago. You could have written a book, probably had a movie. Uh, out of this, uh, no less. Uh, so, I uh, frankly, I hope you do kind of cash in on it. Let's, uh, uh, I mean, that's kind of it's kind of at this point. I'm basically at the point where it's kind of a requirement if I want to basically advance the research more or less. So, and that I'm is really, really what you want. Money. I'm doing it for basically the, uh, I guess the, the learning. I guess. Yeah, and that really is what you want, isn't it? You want to continue the research. Um, yeah. Uh, that must be you starting your computer up to continue it's, your research. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it was an automatic restart of the computer. It's, uh, I happen to be sitting in front of, so. <laughs> I understand. 
Um, all right, let's go to Hartsville, South Carolina. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Hello. Hi, uh, this is Ness from South Carolina. Uh, you're kind of hard to hear, so uh, get close to the phone or something. Oh, hi, Art. This is Ness from South Carolina. Much better, Thanks yes. Taking call. Yes. Uh, hey, Mike, I have a question, maybe somewhat off topic. I was just curious, let's say your creation or experiment would allow you to travel back in time to any period or moment you wanted. I was just wondering what time and why would you visit it, and is there anything you would change about it? Um. Well, you know, believe it or not, I never really – Considered it because this far, every basically every way I know uh, every way I know it only goes forward, it, it, and even when it goes backwards, it only you can't go back to the before uh, the, the day before you turned it on. So um, I never really thought about it too hard. I mean, there's quite. I mean, yeah, if you went back to the day before you built it. <laughs> Well, that, that well, work. here's the here's the thing about uh, going backwards in time. I mean, this is why even theoretical physicists uh, basically say you can't go backwards in time. For one, it violates every conservation law basically there is because, well, you can go back and meet yourself and then do that an infinite number of times. <laughs> that's a lot of free. Basically, that's a lot of mass energy from nowhere. Boy, it sure <laughs> is. Well, you know, it's just been a, an amazing story with you now, go, you know, spanning now decades, and I just wonder what the next step is. I I, I like the idea of a, a book, um, but in terms of your actual experimentation, on the one hand, you could say, I'm done, I don't want to die. On the other hand, you could say, I'm not done, I'm still in my prime, and if I did a big machine before I can do a bigger one now or do it better? Well, I don't know about bigger. I mean, that was pretty, the last one was pretty big, and I did basically, there was like a, oh, geez, there was like probably four or five years worth of experimentation I could do with that before I decided to break. Basically, I want to get out, learn all I can. I mean, it's kind of like building a bigger and bigger particle accelerator. You don't, you want to basically <laughs> milk it for all it's worth before you go build a bigger one. So... <laughs> <laughs> A very fast question, maybe from Connecticut. I think. Hello. Hi. Um, am I speaking? You are, but you've got very little time. So, if you have a question, fire it okay. out. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know: Do you really think it's time or probability space? Because I'm pretty sure there's no such thing as the past or future. It's all the now, and you're really just changing probability. Um, Mike, do you have any comments on that? Um, I'm kind of like if you ever read those uh, books by. Brian Green. He has like four of them on uh, quantum physics and all that. My my this is this my personal view. The, my personal view is basically the future is actually every possible future exists simultaneously. We just can't see it. That's that's how I look at it. All right. Well, Mike, you know it's been a pleasure knowing you all these years, decades now. And don't fry yourself alive, but on the other hand, don't give up because we need people like you. No, I, pl I plan to continue my experiments if I can, so... I'm sure you do. All right, my friend. Good night. Get a good night's rest, and thank you for appearing on Midnight in the Desert. Uh, it was fun, Bart. <laughs> good night. All right, everybody, that's it. Everybody in the world wanted an update on Madman Markham, and now you've got it. He's not going to stop. What's next for Madman? Only time will tell. Good night.